really quick, I'm gonna replace a self-contained compressor today. So obviously take off the access panel, get to the compressor. So you have to take that service valve, stem it all the way out, and then you can use that back valve to hook up to the recovery. This front valve always seems to be able to have um, some type of access to it, so I just don't take that off because I'll blow the whole charge and we've got it recovered. So back seat that thing, put on your hoses, and then front seat it, you know, at least part way, like half seat it, and then recover your refrigerator. Okay, so just to show you, I got it hooked up here. This is seated in the middle. Comes all the way up here to my gauges, open up the blue one, the suction side to the discharge side. Not that it matters, but it's really not that. Open up, refrigerant travels across, down through here, into the inside of the carbon then focus thing, up the gal, okay, so I'm just gonna recover that refrigerant, wait for it to get to zero, and then we'll keep moving forward. While I'm recovering the refrigerant, I just want to show you, just going to unbolt the compressor, so I'm going to unbolt the open So as you can see, I recovered all the gas out of it. It's in a little bit of a vacuum. You can recover it down to like 1 psi, that's fine, but yep. Yeah. You can see that there's uh, two more bolts back here for the compressor and under the and just to show you, I connected my high pressure side to the, to the liquid reservoir service valve and I seated that service valve halfway through to get pressure because I want to make sure that I pumped it down completely. So the way that it's working right now is I was recovering it out of the suction. So that means it would have to pull the refrigerant across the TXV through the coil. Um, so it's possible that some of it's trapped over there. I could have recovered it from both sides, but I couldn't find the port when I first started working. It's on the front unit. So... We're just going to take a quick look at the pressure and make sure, yeah, that pressure is still negative 17, so both sides are good to go, so we're good to get started. So just to note that getting off this rotor lock without this being on there is kind of difficult, but I'm sure a boot will make it work. So, unscrew that rotor lock, now we're going to unscrew this sensor right there, see, unscrew it. Well, first off, we'll unclick the top and then unscrew this. So this thing obviously came off, so we're just going to use, you know, one wrench on that little nut side, one wrench on this side, and take it off. There we go. Now we're going to unsweat this. So obviously we're going to use our acetylene torch to heat this guy up. And we're going to use our channel locks to gently pull it out. Lifted that right out. I had to change my tip size to a little guy. Now the compressor will just gently slide out at this point. Just move over the pipes. Be careful not to burn yourself. And uh, now we're going to unwrap that other compressor and take a look and see how they compare to one another. You can see they're basically the same. So I'm going to go and take a picture of the wiring on the other one. And look at all of them just like the other one. We've got little boots for it, just like the other one, and then uh, we have the service valve, which my boss has told me if we can get away with using the other one, we'll use the other one. But if not, we might be putting in this service valve. Obviously, take a picture and de deconstruct it piece by piece. So we can also stop by looking at this thing, so you can see field connections L1, L2 go right there, and then our fans go, if I can get this to be less blurry, our fans will go right there, L1, L2, so L1, L2, fan, fan. So, all right, that's not too hot. Let's take a look at it in real life. So I took out the fan real quick, and now uh, you can, you know, you can do that by you can squeeze that thing with that and compress those down, those little tabs, or you can use a screwdriver to do it. Now I have a free, and you can see that the line power comes in from over here. You got black and red, can just come right in there. The line power, and then out of those is where the fans went. See how I left those little. Little, little tags right there. Now we have this third one, this black one right here that comes in, comes over here, and we have a bunch of stuff over there. So I'm gonna remove the line powers, line power one, because I know where that goes, and then now uh, we're gonna address over here. So yeah, obviously now that we got that disconnected, just take some pictures and just really try to figure out. Now we look over here, we can see this red one comes down there, this black one comes right there. Anything else up in there? Right, well there's another Look, there's another black one that goes up there, and then I left that little brown one connected so I know that it goes to the brown. So, um, other than that, this thing seems to be kind of wired up the same, so we're gonna, we're gonna wire that puppy up. And I don't know if I can show that right, but and uh, keep going. So, you can see there's one more difference is there's a blue wire in there, I didn't see, so I took out all the others and I traced it out, it goes right there. So, now you can just take a look and see, okay, there's this one right here, and it follows and it lands right there okay so now if we look at wiring diagram we can see that that l1 will go on the protector okay it's a leg of power one go on the protector 
So this one is going on the protector, right? So it kind of seems to me that um, this unit over here, if you see this is con connected to a Emerson controller, which controls the pressure. So that's kind of like the low pressure, high pressure cutout thing. Um, it controls the pressure that this compressor is targeting. So it stands the reason that they remove this and they replace that with this blue one, which is controlled by this controller. So we're gonna remove this jumper out of there. And then we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace it with that blue guy right there. Okay, real quick, so this guy's wired up back together. So red to red, black to black, ground to ground. And move this one from up there to down there to make it a little bit cleaner. Um, just to kind of show you, so you have this protector on this common, which is that pin right here. And then you have this start relay, you see start right there. Start right there, you can make out the S, it's on the side. So start, run, you can put the start relay on there, like so. And those pins go to the winding inside the compressor, so I just wanted to show you. Also, put on those rubber feet before you put it in. So we're also going to replace that filter dryer, and we should do that before we move this back in place. So let's just do that. So really quick, it started getting a little bit smoky with the filter dryer, so I ended up moving it outside, as well as I put some nails, some screws in there, so I could hang some uh, cloths off of it. So it's worth mentioning, maybe I could have put this in the back room to begin with, because it was on wheels, or I moved it outside to begin with. Um, I couldn't move it on the back deck because they said they would lock me out and uh, I guess they're loading in a shipment so I couldn't go on the back so I'm just kind of on the sidewalk right now but I got my thing of wet rags I'm gonna hang them in there and then unsweat it so some wet rags just like so I unsweat that one side I'm gonna put in the new one not just look at the arrows put in this way so I'm gonna put in the new one now with the right arrow direction so just wanted to note that obviously when you order them pretty easy you know C uh, 83s and this one is a C83S. That's it. So, so I braised in the filter dryer. Definitely not proud of it. Not my best work for sure. Now uh, we're gonna use this. Uh, it's like a self. It's a little tapping thing. I'm gonna put this right on here. So I squedged it out with my squeege or squedge, squeegeing, squid, whatever you wanna call it. Put it right on there. Braise that on. And then I'm gonna put it in place. Braise this in place. Roll to lock that in place. I took this off. Put it on the other one to make sure that it's the same thread size. I'm going to lock that in place. I'm going to connect the fans, put it back together, good to go. Okay, so real quick, you can see I uh, brazed in there, brazed in that son of a gun, and then right there, you know, I screwed back on that pressure transducer, and I plugged it back in, put this back in place, and now you can see I'm hooked up my nitrogen tanks there, I'm pressurizing it. It's been holding that for quite some time. I, you know, I sprayed with soapy bubbles there, there, and I put my hand all over the filter dryer, made sure that that was okay up there. Everything's looking fine, so. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let all the nitrogen out so it purges the system of moisture and I'm going to hook it up to a vacuum. Okay, so real quick, as you can see, I got my vacuum pumped hooked up. I am pulling vacuum on it right now. So I actually have my recovery machine. So we have, this is the gas I'm going to add in, my scale. Okay, I have that going into the in and the out. It's going to recover into my gauges. I'm going to open this up and it's going to push it into the actual system. The reason I'm doing it that way is because as you can see, I'm outside. This is a, you know, two-phase. I don't have a two-phase plug anywhere near. So rather than move all my tools inside, I'm gonna recover as much as I can in it. I bet you I could probably get the three pounds in it by doing the recovery technique. Now normally I would just feed it into the suction and, and you know, turn it on and with a compressor, suck it in, you know, slowly. But uh, seeing how, if we go over to this tag, we can see that the charge is only three pounds of 404A. I think that our recovery machine can do that. So I'm going to recover it into it. I'm just waiting for it to pull a vacuum. Now, I have it pulling the vacuum inside the recovery machine. I don't know if that's bad, good, whatever. But all I know is I don't want any I, leftover, like 507 or something in that recovery machine that's going to be put back into this system. It's very small, so I want to make sure to keep that non-condensables out of there. So I'm just pulling the vacuum all the way up to here. So every single line will be purged, good to go. And uh, I'm going to add the refrigerant. Adding refrigerant on my scale right now, uh, it's recovering in it, perfect. Um, now I'm actually going to add in maybe like 3.3 .3 
pounds, four ounces, or something around there, because um, you gotta compensate for your line. So I have six feet of line. Um, there's three of them leading in, so I'm gonna estimate about an ounce per line, as well as there's a line, another six foot line coming off the recovery machine to the actual container, which is another ounce, that's four, three pounds, four ounces. And maybe even I might do three pounds, five, ounce, five ounces, because now you have all the gas loss in the recovery machine. I know it's a rough estimate, but you would probably be okay with three pounds. I'm just gonna add a little extra to make sure that, um, you know, that's all right. So all this refrigerant's added, so now I'm gonna wheel it inside, connect back the wires, and let it run and see how it goes. Okay, so I hooked in those fans, and now I'm gonna put on this cover. But I just wanted to run through how this guy kind of works really quick, just super quick. So first off, that controller sends a signal over to the relay board that's in that terminal box right there. Right? So from there, the junction box, right, it, it has a relay inside. So when that thing says, it's too cold, I need a compressor running, it sends voltage. And I don't know if you remember earlier, but we had this blue... Uh, in brown wire, we had a brown wire go to this guy and the blue wire come out of this guy that brown wire I'm pretty sure it's the brown one could be maybe blue. I think it's brown goes into here and that that voltage that goes from that relay Goes to this Emerson controller now this Emily Emerson controller is looking at these two. So we have this uh, Pressure transducer and this pressure transducer up there and this Emerson controller goes am I in the pressure zone? And if it's not in the pressure zone then what it'll do is, it will go, okay, turn on the compressor. So it'll take the voltage from there, put it to this one, and then this relay will activate, and it goes to the compressor. Now what happens from there is that energy, right, will go and land on this pin. It will go, and it'll land on this, see this blue one right here? It'll land on this second pin, right? So if we go right here, we can see, look on the side we'll actually see those numbers one then there's two and then there's star and then M so it'll go on this pin right here right there okay and so what happened is if you look at that pin is connected to this coil so this is a this is a relay that works on amperage right so when it first starts and tries to run it's gonna draw a ton of amps and what it's gonna do is it's gonna close this relay so what happens is when it closes that relay, these contacts here move up and now the stop winding is involved. And this capacitor gives voltage over to that stop winding and the stop winding gets the compressor turning. Now when the amperage lowers, this relay disengages and the voltage just goes to the stop run and stop windings. So yeah, that's kind of how that all works. But let's put it together and see if it runs. So you hear that, the compressor's running. Coming down, feels good, like it's coming down the temp. Let's take a look at the sight glass, and see if we can see it in there. Sight glass looking good. Yeah, discharge, hot, suction, cold, no leaks, good to go. So, uh, Typically you see there's got to be something that causes the compressor to go bad. So real quick, I just wanted to mention that this pressure transducer right here, so I put it on there and it would never change values and I put it on there and it never changes values. Now if you look at the value on there, it's at 41 right now. This is not reflective, this is open. Okay, it was on there, I moved it to there, I was trying to see if it can do it. So that pressure, that pressure transducer is toast. So this compressor was just continuously running forever and ever and ever and it burned itself out. So, yeah, so I mentioned that. So, yeah, so that's how you do it. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell. Yeah, thanks.